We're here with Jonathan Kaminga, a wing with the G League Ignite team. Jonathan, I appreciate you taking the time, man. Appreciate it for having me, man. So when did you first get out here? Uh, you mean in America? No, or? no, no, in, uh, with the program. With the program, uh, in August. And what is the... What has the whole process been like for you so far? The whole process has been so good. Like, I enjoy it. Like, I didn't know it was going to be this way my first time coming here. It was going to be a little hard, but it's hard, but it's something that I commit to. And whenever you commit to something, it just becomes easy. And that's how it is for me right now. And, and what I guess, where do you think you've maybe improved the most, you know, since you've got out here um, over these last few months? Uh, I'll say on the basketball. On the basketball, I feel like I improved more, more playing off the ball, uh, just learning the game more, uh, my ball handling, uh, my vision on the court, my mm -hmm. shooting skills, pretty much everything. And for people watching this who maybe, you know, I know a lot of high school fans, college fans, you know, they know who Jonathan Kaminga is, but maybe for people watching who don't know, you know, your background, your story, what can you tell us about, you know, where you're from, um, and kind of your path until this point? Uh, I'll say for people, I'll tell them I'm from the Congo. That's where I was born, grew up out there. At the age of 14, I moved to the U.S. And when I moved to the U.S., I started playing high school basketball. And now I'm with the G League Knight. That's pretty much what people need to really know about me. We're going to break down some of your film here. We're going to go through some clips uh, from high school, some of your recent scrimmages, some from practice that I was able to, you know, shoot the last couple of days mm -hmm. here, and just, you know, break down your game, ask you what you're seeing on the court, and, and kind of show people, you know, what type of player you are. Yes, um, so here's some of your high school film, and one of the things that stood out most to me watching you was just you're very comfortable in transition, you know, whether you're the ball handler or not. Mm -hmm. um, why are you so comfortable in these type of situations? Uh... I'll say it's something I'm just really used to it. Like, I work every day, and it's getting comfortable because I put a lot of work in. And in high school, guys were kind of moving out of the way like this, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like in high school, I was just one of the biggest guys on the court most of the time. And so nobody trying to, like, take a charge or anything. So they was just letting me go and do my thing. So what's the adjustment been like then from going from that level to now you're playing – against guys every day who have NBA experience, who have played all over Europe. What's been the biggest adjustment? Uh, the biggest adjustment is to slow up my game. Like in high school, you're just going to run 100 miles per hour. But out here with the pro, you got to slow down your game and just read everything they give it to you. You're not just going to go and bully everybody. So we've seen the kind of athletic piece in, in transition, right? Um, but what, what stood out to me is, is your passing ability in, in the open court. What do you see here? You remember this play? Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's one of the things I was saying that my game has grown on just the vision of the court and learning more how to involve everybody in the game. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty high-level left-handed pass, you know, to a guy running the floor and then, and then leads to a foul. And we've seen that even here, you know, at, at this level as well, um, pushing in transition. And then what do you see here? I see open, man. That's where I'm trying to get better at it and watch every type of angle, whatever somebody's open, and just give him the first pass and not easy day on passing it. Yeah, for sure. And so we've seen it in transition, you running the floor, but also handling. But I think you're at your best when you're putting pressure on the rim in, in the half court. I know you can shoot and handle and do all those things. Um, but, I mean, you're almost impossible to guard when you're downhill to your right hand like this, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that's one of your biggest strengths? I'll say it's one of them. Like, that's pretty much what I'm working on every time. Just attack the rim most of the time. And whenever no people knows that, I'm good at attacking the rim. That's when I'm extending my, my, my game from outside and show that I got all the type of skills. Yeah, finding that balance, right, between yeah. putting pressure on the rim, but also if they give you space, showing you can shoot it. And one guy who you remind me of is Jalen Brown, um, you know, from Boston, a guy who was a top five pick, mm -hmm. number three to the Celtics. Have you studied him much? Um, I haven't really studied him. I haven't really get time to, like, watch his films and stuff, but... I heard a lot of people talking about it, so like it just make me want to really watch 
a lot of film on Jalen and just learn some stuff on Jalen. Yeah, because he's a guy who's, you know, an all-star caliber player now, more or less, plays both ends, similar to a lot of the guys you mentioned with Kawhi and, and all those names. Um, but here you can see just how aggressive he is getting downhill um, and then the dunk on LeBron. Uh, so obviously, you know, a, a good guy, I think, to, to model your game after. So, yeah, when you're getting downhill like that, you know, you're, you're almost impossible to guard. And then another young guy who was just drafted in the top five this past year is Patrick Williams. Do you like his game? Yeah, I feel like I'll say it was similar. We got the same type of body, like the same game, and we're more involved on defense too. Yeah, and he was a guy who uh, didn't even start in college and was still a top five pick and is now starting and reminds a lot of people of a young Kawhi. Um, and so I think you have this powerful explosiveness just like that, right? The ability to attack off the catch like that um, is one of your biggest strengths. And then you can also do it you know, off the live dribble too. Um, what are some of your go-to moves in these types of situations? Uh, I'll say I really have a little hazy on mm -hmm. anytime trying to attack somebody because some people don't believe that I'm going to take that shot. So if I hazy you the first time and you're not going for it, I'll just step back and just shoot it. But most of the time, like I said, it's just attack downhill first because I'm trying to get on the free throw more and it's a easy and it opens for everybody. So if they stop me on the day and I just got to use my vision on the court and see who's open and make the game easy. And then you mentioned it, the next step has, has been being able to read the floor, right, when you, when you attack. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see here? Okay, so you get downhill to your right hand, and then the help comes. What's, what's your read? Uh, there wasn't one guy coming down the hill. But yep. I feel like I should have not take a lot of dribble right there because he gave me a couple space and there was two men out there on the three waiting for me to make a move. So me taking too many dribbles, I feel like you collect everybody on defense and just start watching me. And then and I think as you get more comfortable too, you'll be able to make this pass mm -hmm. off the dribble to Isaiah probably, right? Mm -hmm. Who's kind of circling around. Um, but again, we've seen kind of your growth, you know, even here in practice and then over the course of the season, you know, here's Jalen Brown kind of doing that. You talked about the hezzy, the crossover, the drop off. I think that's what you can look like in the NBA. Um, and then here, this is the possession I was talking about. Similar possession, right? You just mm -hmm. made the read. What do you see here? So you get downhill to your right. Isaiah was right open. But I felt like I just, it was a little kind of hard, like the pass was a little kind of hard, but I just got to adjust a little bit or to our live. Yep, yeah, but still, a good read, a good pass on the move, and then I think nine times out of ten, you know, that's, that's going to be a dunk. So mm -hmm. you've shown your ability to, you know, read the floor like that. And then um, we saw it in transition, too. And then the step back game, too. Uh, how, how often have you, have you had this in your game? Uh, the step back game, I will say I had it since back in high school. Mm -hmm. But like I said, in high school, I used to just have to use my athleticism and just go fast. I didn't really need a lot of stuff or show a lot of stuff that I got. But... Here I feel like it's something that I do every day, so it was kind of easy for me to just make that move and get my shots off. And if they're going to play the drive, right, and give you space, mm -hmm. then, then you have the ability to, to pull up from there. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's an NBA caliber move. And then I think, like I said earlier, it's about finding that balance of, like, getting downhill mm -hmm. or, or settling, right? Yeah. Anything you would have done differently here? I feel like the one thing I'll say, I, on that move, I feel like I settled because I, right before that, I think I had two shots in a row. Oh, uh, okay. Heat play. check. Yeah, and one thing I didn't really read, I didn't know I had a small guard on me. Mm. And that's the thing that where a coach be telling us where take what they give it to you, just set their game down and read what's coming. So I was just a little faster. I wasn't patient on reading the game or anything like that, but... It's something that we're working on every day with coach, and I feel like I'll get better at it. But again, I mean, when you're making shots, when you're getting downhill, you're really, really tough to guard. Like here, I mean, you can get to your right hand anytime you want, right? Mm -hmm. um, just quick, powerful, and then Jalen is really good at kind of running through the catch mm -hmm. like this. Uh, is that something you study? That's, uh, that's another thing that where I got to get better at it. Looking first for attack and then second take my shot back. Like I always say, like, 
it's something, it's whatever the, the defender give it to you, and that's where I got to get better at every time. So reading that he's helping off the corner mm -hmm. and then kicking to, to Peyton Pritchard. Um, but again, I mean, you, you've made great strides as a passer, you know, over the years, and I think that's becoming a strength of yours. Um, and then just to see the growth as a shooter, you know, since you were first developing, I mean, what, what's gone into that becoming a guy who can really make catch and shoot threes at the rate that you have? Uh, so that comes to becoming a pro. Like, like I said, most of the time you'll go to teams where you don't have the ball all mm -hmm. the time in your hands. It's only one ball in the court and it's five players. So you just gotta get, be ready to catch and shoot and hit the shot. So it's like playing with people like Jim Sarr and Kyrie Irving, KD. Yep. If they triple that with them, they double them, just be ready to hit that shot. And it's something I've been working on because most of the time, as coming as a rookie in the league, I'm not really going to have the ball most of the time in my hand. And I just got to get prepared for whatever they give it to me and just execute and get better at it every day. Yeah, that's the best mentality to have. And that's how you'll have an impact as a rookie. And you can see your growth even from the first scrimmage game. So here, what, what do you see here? Kind of catch and hold, right? Mm -hmm. What would you do now if you had that back? What did I? Oh, I had, I had a big man on me. One thing I just had to do, just pinch the ball back to Isaiah and I think go get it and settle the game down. Yeah, or even just catch it on catch the hop it. and let it fly, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's something that, you know, we've seen from NBA wings, an area that they've really improved. Like, here's Jalen Brown. Look, the shot preparation, right? The hands, the feet, and then boom, right into it. Um, and, and that's what we'll see from you here. This is picture perfect right here. So look at your shot preparation. What do you see? I was getting, I was ready for that one. I was getting low and getting ready to catch the ball. So what are the keys then? Stay low, hands ready? Stay low, hands ready, and just trust your shot. Yeah, that's perfect. That's what it looks like right there. Um, and, and just mechanically, everything, you seem so much more comfortable, like here from way beyond NBA 3, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that you've become a more consistent shooter? Yeah, I feel like, like I trust my shot. I work on it every day, and I just feel like if I just execute and just do what I have to do, hold my follow through, get low on it, and I'll hit a shot, an open shot most of the time. Um, you know, I think that's why your game is built for the NBA. And then I think you're doing a good job of starting to realize, like, how they're defending you too, right? So what does your man do here? My man goes under the screen because he didn't thought I was going to shoot that ball. And then you just pop back and let it fly, right? Yeah. Um, and again, in the NBA, it's a lot of playing off of handoffs. It's second side pick and roll, all that stuff. And I think, you know, that's somewhere where you'll have success. You remember this play? Mm, yeah, there was, there was a five, uh, the shot clock was was winding down. Going down, yeah. So I have five seconds. That's a tough shot, but you knocked it down for the N one. If it wasn't short clock, what, what do you see? Any any reads you would have made? Let's see. So you're coming off to your left. I see Isaiah popping up on the three. Yeah, with the left maybe, right? Yeah. The hook pass? Uh -huh. And I see uh, Deshaun Men was trying to help from Kai, and I see Deshaun wide open right there for a catch and shoot. Yeah, so you have either. You have that or you have the hook pass, but again, like you said, late in the shot clock, and, and then you get the and one. Mm -hmm. And then even today, from watching you, this really stood out. Um, so you're going to get downhill and pick and roll to your right, and then what do you see? I see Bobby lifting out from the corner wide open and he knocked the shot down. Have you always had that pass? Uh, not really in high school, but as I got here, I've been working on it. It's getting more comfortable and every day. Yeah, I mean, that's a big time read. You know, I think that's showing that you can play pick and roll and be a decision maker too. So where you've been maybe most comfortable is kind of in this mid post area, right? Mm -hmm. um, what are some of your go-to moves there? Uh, first, we'll just catch the ball, mm, read the defender, read the people, see who's open first, and then if ain't nobody open, uh, face the player and just pump fake or jab him one time. If he doesn't go, attack. If he jab, just attack the rim. If he give me a little space, I know I, I trust my jumper, I know I'll hit that one. So who are some of the best in, in this area that you like to watch? NBA-wise. I, I think 
Kevin Durant mm -hmm. in the base. Uh, Paul George, Kawhi especially. Mm -hmm. That's whatever he get pretty much most of his basket. Uh, Pascal Siakam. Yep. LeBron too, LeBron, right? LeBron, AD. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if you need a bucket late clock, you know, this is a, a good area to, to get it done, and that just shows your explosiveness. And then again, you know, here in practice, um, not a lot of people who can guard you with your, your strengths and, and, and your quickness. Um, and then here's Kawhi, too. What is it that you like most about his game? You have the patience. Like, you have the patience of basketball. You don't, you don't rush on anything because he knows how good he is. He knows nobody can guard him. It's just... It's simple to attack and just the passion of basketball. Like, mm -hmm. read the floor first, read what the defender gave it to you, and nobody knows where you're going. So you're the only one who knows with the ball where you're making the move or what type of move you're making. And he had to work to get here. You know, he was a two-year guy at San Diego State, didn't really shoot threes, was more like a rebounder, energy guy. And now, obviously, you know, a guy with multiple rings and one of the best players in the NBA. And then, all right, so we've seen the quickness, the athleticism, mm -hmm. but then you got the touch too, right? T talk me through this move. Uh, so I got my trainer. I feel like that move, it's been there since I was in the ninth grade. We've yeah. been working on And just right there on the post up, if you really see it, I used, I was going to bully him, but... If I was keep going with the dribble, I think it was going to take a charge. And so I read why he gave it to me and just go one leg up and just elevate on top of him because I was a little taller than him and just make the play easy. So get your shoulder into him, create a little space, and then kind of the, the dirk fall away, right? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, that's, that's a high-level move. And then just to show the footwork um, here, not exactly a mid-post touch, but uh, you love these up-and-unders, right? Mm -hmm. What do you see here? I see Isaiah popping up. Uh, but, this, but, I, but I like this move, you know, just to get to your spot, you give him the up and under, and then the step through. Um, I mean, that's really impressive. And, and that's something that we've seen from Kawhi also. Um, what, what do you like about this? You'll see here against Marvin Bagley. Uh, similar, right? And one of the guys who used to do that the most is Kobe. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much have you studied? So obviously Coach Shaw, you know, the, was around him for so many years. What, what has he kind of told you guys about, you know, the type of competitor that he was? Uh, most of the time he showed us films. Like yeah. We went through a couple of films of Kobe, and that's where I was saying, you just got to take what the defender gave it to you and just read the game. And Kobe was really competitive on every position, like no matter where on defensive-wise, mm -hmm. offense, lose ball. It was always involved in it. Yeah, one of the best ever to do it, and his footwork was was crazy. Um, and, and so, you know, there we saw that from you as well. Saw it from Kawhi. And then I think where you've improved also is just as a passer in these situations. What do you see here as you make this read? Mm, I saw a couple people wide open. I, will, I had to take that down because I had a small defender. Yep. But at the time, I saw there was a double team coming. And... There was a couple people wide open and just make the play easy and just let the ball go. Yeah, that's a great read because you have the mismatch. They're going to try to double you, right? Mm -hmm. And then you see the weak side, create a wide open three for, for your teammate. Um, so we've seen you do it on the perimeter. We've seen you do it in, in the mid post. And then the one area I've been maybe most impressed is just defensively. It seems like you've really embraced kind of being a defender. Do you think that's something you can bring to the next level? Uh, that's what I'm trying to do it like defense being there and I feel like I had to just adjust some low stuff on it and be more of the lock, uh, lockdown defender because most of the time with my size uh, as a rookie coming up I feel like most of the time I'll play I'll be playing against people like KD mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to guard people like KD Kawhi Paul George so at the young age that's one thing I gotta improve on and just get better at because it's one thing that help in the future. And if stuff don't go your way on the offensive stuff, but there is at least something you got to bring on the table on the other side is just defense. For sure. Yeah, and then just to show you some of your defensive clips here, I mean, this is perfect. You're picking up full court, you're turning him, you're applying pressure, you know, you're not allowing yourself to get screened. 
Um, and, and you guard point guards a fair amount, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think they eventually score on this, but you know, just to show you, like that's the type of tenacity that you can play with. And then we saw that sometimes in high school too, right? Mm -hmm. This is Zaire Williams. Yeah. Um, take me through this. What are you seeing? Just trying to speed him up. Um, just speeding up people wherever I got the ball. Like I said, me guarding the point guards, I'm the first defender. With the energy that I bring on the table on the defensive wise, that's the same energy everybody gonna pick up. If I don't press my man, uh, get for him frustrated to lose the ball, I feel like everybody will just not be ready. So the energy that I bring, it's the same thing as Patrick Beverly on mm -hmm. the Clippers. Mm -hmm. The energy that I bring on the defense, that helps everybody to just lose the ball and whenever you lose the ball you don't have to get on no plays you just grab the ball and just get on transition and get an easy back so you can set the tone you know for the rest of the team with your defense and then sometimes okay maybe you you make a gamble right mm -hmm. um and then kind of jogging a little bit uh like you said finding that switch to always have the energy mm -hmm. uh, to do that but i think when you are locked in like that i mean it's pretty scary like here i think this is the other day even just to show you know your footwork your length um, do you know your wingspan? Mm, I don't know my wingspan. Seven foot at least, huh? Seven, mm, seven two, something like Longer that. Longer than mine, yeah, that's, that's for, for sure. sure. Um, but then again, here on, on the closeout, um, what, are you, what are you trying to do here? Mm, he had me jumping a little on the first move. But with my quickness and athletics, I feel like I can't recover on that shot at any time. So. It's something that I had to just, sometimes, like in high school, like I'll say, I used to let some plays go. Mm -hmm. And as more as I keep growing, and like I said, I was going out, out uh, coming in the league as a rookie, I'll be guarding most of the nicest, best player in the world. So it's something that I got to really work on and not let any play go. So. Yeah, that's great energy. Uh, you know, okay, maybe he gets you with the up fake, but you recover, um, and then you attack the rebound. So I think that's kind of a glimpse of what you can look like, right? Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, okay, it's always buying in. You know, sometimes maybe can sit down in a stance a little more mm -hmm. or, or get a hand contest there even, right? Um, but in general, I think you have the ability. And so just to show you Patrick Williams, like who he's had to guard as a rookie in the NBA, right? So one day he's guarding Giannis. Um, how, how would you defend Giannis? Uh, people like Giannis, I'll say, he don't have like a jam consistent jumper. I'll just give him a little space. But as I give him a little space, I just got to get ready and say, stay down. Because whenever he attack, he's taller, bigger, stronger. If he bump me a little bit, he's going to move me out of my position. So just got to stay low down and just be ready to get that contact because he's going to come at you. If you keep leaving wide open, he's going to try to come at you and make you foul. So try to give him enough space to where you can still get a contest mm -hmm. um, and be in position if he tries to get into your body. Yeah, that's perfect. And that's what Patrick you know, does really well right there. And then Bradley Beal, um, how would you guard him? Uh, Bradley Beal, not give him a space. Mm -hmm. uh, have one end up and another one down. Because you can't get that jump at any time whenever it wants to. So, and just be more consistent. Not to reach the ball. Just move your your, your full quick. And just stay down. Don't don't jump for nothing. Don't just contest it whenever you take a shot. And then the last one here, who, again, this is a rookie coming in, top five pick, who's asked to guard all these people, which you might as well. Um, what about Kawhi? How would you guard Kawhi in the, in the mid post? Guard Kawhi in the mid post. I think you gotta be a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. You gotta use your, your strength first, and then, like I said, on Brady Bill, the same way, because you don't know when he's gonna take that shot. Mm -hmm. So just be ready to contest the ball whenever you take the shot. So use your strength, stay down on the shot fakes, and then contest. Um, and that's really, really good defense, and that's why he's starting and, and playing a lot of minutes. Um, and then it seems you've gotten really good in pick and roll, too, as, as the big man even, like being able to kind of play both guys, right? Mm -hmm. Is that something you've studied? Uh, so, <clears throat> like I said, with my size, my strength, most of the time they're going to put me on the four mm -hmm. playing guarding bigs because 
I feel like it's something I'll do better and I'll be able to carry any, any forward. So, and most of the time people gonna try to come do pick and roll. Mm -hmm. So it's somewhere I gotta really learn and study. And like I said, I gotta be involved in the game and just communicate, talking too much, helping my, 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 my teammate where the screen coming from. Yep. Help him drop a little bit so he can't recover and I can't go back to my play, to my defender. Yeah, and being in perfect position to, you know, be on the ball handler, but get back to the role man also. And then we saw Patrick Williams' strength. I think you have that too, you know, just kind of moving him off of his spot, mm -hmm. making him uncomfortable, and then the turnover. turnover yeah. So, I mean, that shows your versatility. You're guarding point guards, you're guarding floors, you're switching on these ball screens, and then just the active hands, right? Mm -hmm. Give me that. And, and then we're going the other direction. Um, and then I just, I like the activity. You know, you're digging at the ball, you're aggressive. Um, and then the end of the play here, kind of stood out to me a little bit right mm -hmm. just give me the ball you know is it, it do you are you going to bring that kind of intensity to the nba uh that's that's the one thing i gotta adapt to uh coming to the nba as a rookie most of the time anybody you play against they're always going to try to bully you because you're a rookie you have coming and so if you bring the toughness on the table uh most of the guys gonna respect you and I'm not saying that you're going to bring it and be a disrespectful guy, no, but you're going to show them got, you got a little toughness in you, so not to just go at you like that most of the time. And they'll respect you, for yeah. sure, if you do that. Um, and then just a few off-the-ball clips just to show you know, your athleticism. So from the other day, just the active hands, right? Mm -hmm. um, then the spin going the other way, um, you know, just to show your versatility uh, on that end of the floor, on the ball, off the ball. Um, what about here defensively? Where are you supposed to be? So you're in the corner? Supposed to be on the help because it's not the. Uh, supposed to be on the help there for. Because you're the furthest away from the mm -hmm. from the ball, right? Yeah. So maybe you should be a little bit loaded more toward toward the middle, mm -hmm. um, and then as he does get downhill, just having the active hands to take that away, right? Mm -hmm. um, they make a tough shot, but this is what you can look like, you know, on that end of the floor. I mean, this is. Uh, the energy, the effort here, you can see your length, your athleticism, getting on the floor for the loose balls, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and like you said, just bringing kind of that, that toughness to the game, right? Uh, and I love this too. This is the multiple efforts, okay? So you have one here to take away sh the shot at the rim. And then again, I know this goes in, but um, that's great, man. Any coach is going to love that, you know, who's coaching you. And, and you mentioned it, Kawhi, is, for as successful as he is, mm -hmm. he's someone who does these things. Um, here at the rim, big hands, long arms, we're going the other direction. Um, and then just becoming, you know, an elite rebounder too, I think is, is something that you can do. So as you kind of look forward, you know, for these next couple weeks, you're entering the bubble soon. What are you hoping to show um, NBA teams? This is probably going to be their first, like, real look at you, right? Um, what are you hoping to show them? Uh, I feel like I'm hoping the first of all on my defensive play, like, I want people to know that I'm really involved on defense first because defense bring offense. Bring defense make offense easy. Mm -hmm. And on offense, I just got to show that I'm able to do all, every type of things, involve my player, move without the ball, just be involved in the game even if I'm not the one scoring and helping other people to score easy and just open the floor. And then before I let you go, has it been – Difficult at all to watch, like, you know, college guys are out playing and they're on national TV and, and you know, you're just kind of a little bit tucked away here. Has that been difficult? No, you haven't even been difficult. Uh, me just being here quiet, nobody knowing what we're doing. Uh, it helps us a lot. I feel like we're getting better every day. And as soon as we get on the spotlight, we just go out there and show that we've been working. We haven't just been sitting here just being working every day. And last question, uh, so many African players who have had success, you know, in the NBA, you know, whether it's Bismack or you could, you could go down, down the line, um, have been bigs, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you could be one of the first, like, perimeter players. Do you take pride in that? I take a lot of pride, just especially being from Africa and being one of the guys that kids back home looking uh, – it's really like, I'm really proud of what I've been doing. 
and I'm just gonna keep working and just not let anybody down and just do what I can do to become the best. Great. Well, Jonathan, you've been a role model for a lot of you know young kids at home and here in the states, and so I appreciate you taking the time and best of luck. You know these next few weeks. Thank you, man. I really appreciate for you to coming out here. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.